uh, this is uh, Pastor Walter Martinez. I'm here with Brad Cutliffe. We are doing our podcast. Um, uh, we've been talking about, uh, well, let's pray first. Father God, we just want to give you praise, give you glory. We thank you for the revelation of your word. We just yield our hearts to the Holy Ghost that our utterance may be uh, pleasing to him, that uh, it be not be our words, but his words, not be our will, but his will, mm -hmm. that we might uh, flow with him and uh, be ministered to by him and minister to others at the same time. We give you praise and we give you mm -hmm. glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We've been talking about, um, in light of our redemption, going through uh, the... Uh, the Exodus, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things that we found, I think it was in, um, I forget what, what, what scripture that was, was that um, uh, Exodus 15, uh, verse, uh, verse 13, which says, uh, uh, Thou in thy mercies hast led, hast led forth thy people, which thou hast redeemed, mm -hmm. uh, uh, though, though thou, thou hast guided them in thy strength and in thy habitation, unto thy habitation. And we're talking about, that this was a song that was sung by Moses and the children of Israel mm. after they had passed through the, uh, the Red Sea. Um, but we locked in on this word redeemed. Mm -hmm. And we realize that the word redeemed uh, entails much more than just the price paid. That's right. Um, and that it also meant uh, to, that a price would be paid, but it also meant vengeance upon the captors. Mm -hmm. um, Amen. And we kind of explored that last, the last podcast. And so really we're just going to kind of pick up where we left off on that and uh, just take it from there. So if you, if you would like to... Uh, read, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, it's Ezekiel chapter 14. And we Ezekiel? Read you mean Exodus? Exodus, pardon, Four pardon me. Yeah. Exodus 14. We read, uh, this is 21 through 24, and I'll just start at 21 because we're going okay. right to 22. Uh, and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and he made... Uh, the sea dry land and the waters were divided verse 22 and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left verse 23 and the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst into the midst of the sea even all the Pharaoh's horses his chariots and his horsemen Wow well let's go ahead and read verse uh, 20, 26 to 28 sure. as well. This is uh, Exodus 14, 26 through 28. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Verse 28. And the waters returned and covered the chariots, and the horsemen, and all the host of the Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, there remained not so much as one of them. Wow. Well, we can see through this portion of Scripture when we're talking about the concept of what does redemption really entail. Mm -hmm. uh, and the idea is uh, to be uh, bought out for, for today, for mm -hmm. New Testament believers. Right. The idea is to be bought out of the slave market of sin, or to be bought, bought out of the slavery or mastery of sin, mm -hmm. of which uh, the Egyptians uh, were a type of, right. um, but even more so to uh, execute judgment upon those that had held us captive. Mm -hmm. So in the same way in the New Testament, it, what happened in, in the book of Exodus uh, really is, is kind of a reflection of what happened with Jesus, because mm -hmm. here he comes, we are buried with him in baptism, we are raised again with him through the operation of God. Uh, uh, the handwriting that was upon the, wall, upon the wall, that means all of our mistakes, all of mm -hmm. our sins, uh, all of that was wiped away, was forgiven, was cleansed, was removed, 
And on top of that, uh, he took uh, cap he took captivity captive. In other words, he the uh, the enemy was overtaken in the grave. That's right. And it was led captive. They triumphed uh, over them. And, and they triumphed over them in it. So you see a lot of those types being relived in the New Testament. That's right. Especially in the epistles when it starts to explain to us uh, uh, more of what Jesus did through his ministry, through mm -hmm. his death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. Uh, and that is so powerful. It is. It could be one of the most overlooked aspects of redemption. It that, sure that, is. That, that point that you're bringing up, that the, that the captives were overtaken. Uh, and so, defeated. And defeated, absolutely. Because I think so many, so many times Christians can still be in uh, places of bondage, even though they've been redeemed, mm -hmm. that they've been redeemed out of. Well, that's right. And we also talked about how Pharaoh's army, Pharaoh and his army, went after the children of Israel, after they'd agreed to let them go, that's right. after they had already made it to the Red that's Sea. Right. Here comes Pharaoh mm -hmm. wanting to put God's people back into captivity. Mm -hmm. And they're starting to freak out. And God just tells Moses, you know, what is in your hand? And, mm -hmm. and stretch, uh, forth, your stretch hand. forth your hand over the sea. Uh, and under God's direction, Pharaoh did exactly that. They escaped. The waters parted, mm -hmm. from, created one, a wall on one side, a wall That's on right. the other side. That's the right. ground dried up. They walked right through. And, as, and then when Pharaoh's army followed, uh, Moses again put his hand, or stretched out his arm over the sea, and then the, the water came flooding back in. That's right and destroyed and killed all of those that chased after him. That's right. The horses, but the people, all of them. Everything. So how foolish the enemy is. How foolish. <laughs> how foolish it was to, Amen. to to enter into a miracle of God by entering into the seas that had parted. Look what God is doing for his people. Uh, that's and they amazing. pursue anyway and are, over, and are destroyed because of it. And it's interesting that they were all in agreement at that right. point in time. It wasn't until they started bickering that things started going bad for them. Anyways, that's right. uh, that's let's powerful. talk a little bit about the destroyer mm -hmm. uh, that uh, is being mentioned there in Exodus, because that's part of it too. Because uh, we mm -hmm. see that, that uh, what God did to the Egyptians, but he made some pretty interesting comments. Mm -hmm. So let's read, if you wouldn't mind, please, Exodus 12, 23. Mm -hmm. Exodus 12, 23 says, For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer, will not allow, not permit the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite or to slay, inflict harm upon you. Amen. Amen. So it says he will not allow, That's right. will not permit the destroyer. So the question is, is, who is this destroyer? Right. It's not God. It's not God. Uh, uh, <laughs> thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father God. Uh, so, for, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. That's the whole concept of Passover. Mm -hmm. When people look, and we're going to look at this a little bit more, right. but when people think about Passover, they're thinking about jumping and skipping. Right. When really Passover is talking about a bird in flight mm -hmm. that's, that's passing over mm -hmm. uh, her young, mm -hmm. hovering. Uh, hovering over, mm -hmm. well, well, flying over mm -hmm. and then landing and hovering yeah. on. Yeah. So the whole concept is to pass over is to fly over, to sense danger. Mm -hmm. When it that's senses good. danger, it lands. When it lands, it spreads that's its true. wings over mm -hmm. its young to protect it. Mm -hmm. And it makes, uh, like a bird of prey will make this awful hissing sound mm -hmm. that terrifies the enemy. Right. Um, so that's, that's a good. concept of yeah. Passover. And a lot of times people go, well, Passover means just jump over, skip over. No, it doesn't mean that. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, well, let's just, let's just show that. Amen. Uh, uh, the Lord did not allow the destroyer to enter into the houses whose doorposts were stained with the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. It is obvious that the Lord was not the destroyer, but rather he protected those homes mm -hmm. that were stained with blood. Amen. 
So let's read John 10.10. John 10.10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So here uh, in the New Testament, mm -hmm. uh, in the Gospels, uh, uh, the Apostle John uh, records what Jesus said. Right. And uh, Jesus simply said, the thief, he's the one mm -hmm. that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's right. These are characteristics of the devil. That's right. His, Jesus' characteristics are found in, I've come to give you life right. and give it to you more abundantly. Amen. So we can see the two characteristics, right. the two, uh, uh, how, how can I say this? Um, uh, inner inner drives of each individual. The thief right. is the one that really is so hateful. Right. Uh, he's come to kill, steal, and destroy. Right. But Jesus is so full of life mm -hmm. that he's come to bring it to us in abundance. That's right. Uh, so. Yeah, there's nothing else in the thief but to kill, th steal, and destroy. That's he, he's that. motivated by and that. And so if you go back to Exodus, you can see those characteristics in That's that right. same word, the destroyer. That's right. Uh, <laughs> interesting. That's really good. The Lord did not allow the destroyer to enter into the houses mm -hmm. whose doors were stained with blood, with the blood of the Lamb. Amen. That is obvious. Why? Because the Lord protected those mm -hmm. homes. Can't do both. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's let's go to uh, let's go to uh, uh, Malachi okay. three verses nine through eleven. Says you are cursed with a curse, for you have cursed, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now here's here's, I want to just stop for one second because mm -hmm. I want to bring something out here. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole concept of Malachi here is that the, the, the children of, of Israel were in disobedience. Right. They were not supporting the house of God. Mm -hmm. uh, they, so, they weren't bringing in their ties. And that's why uh, they were cursed. Mm -hmm. In other words, they brought these, they, they allowed the devil to work in their lives. Right. Uh, the reason why they were cursed is because they weren't protected from the destroyer because of their disobedience. Mm -hmm. God didn't curse them. Right. They were cursed mm -hmm. because of disobedience. That's right. Now, I've said this many times. God redeems us from the curse of the law. Mm -hmm. He did not redeem us from obeying the law. Mm -hmm. You have to still walk in obedience right. to God Amen. if you want to keep the destroyer mm -hmm. <coughs> from operating in your life. That's right. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. Why right. are their lives at such upheaval? Well, it, of course it takes heart examination. Right. But we have to be honest with ourselves. Could our problem be, and there can be a lot of problems. Sure. Could it be that there's areas in our life that we're not surrendered right. to God in, and that we're going to just do our own thing? Right. Because that's going to open the door for the destroyer. Absolutely. For people that don't pay their tithes and, and, and give their, their offerings, uh, they're hurting themselves. Right. Not because you're cursed. You can't be cursed today. Right. But you can certainly allow the devil to work in your life. Right. You can certainly allow the the destroyer to work in your life. That's right. So uh, so as we read this, uh, you are cursed with a curse. He didn't say, I've cursed you. Right. He said, you are cursed with a curse, mm -hmm. for ye have robbed me. Why? You robbed me. Mm -hmm. Even this whole nation. Go ahead and read verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. All he needs is our obedience. That's right. So that he can act on his promises. Amen. That's well said. To prosper you. Mm -hmm. That's all he needs. That's right. He's saying, here's the solution to your problem. Mm -hmm. Just bring in your ties. That's right. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. You want to get out of debt? Then start paying your tithes. Mm -hmm. You want to get bills paid? I remember one time with, with Blue, um, that's my son, if, in case anybody uh, doesn't know that. 
uh, he, uh, to make a long story shorter, uh, uh, he, he was taught that if he wants to get out of debt to give, mm -hmm. give your way out of debt. Mm -hmm. And he's a very prosperous young man. Yes, he is. Uh, very prosperous. It just blows me away how prosperous he is. But anyways, because uh, he learned to give himself out of debt. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, you need faith for that. Right. You know, so if you don't That's have right. the faith for it, don't do it. <laughs> Start off with your tithes and your offerings. Right. And then, because when, uh, because when this, I think it's in in, uh, in verse eight or something like that. When when in Malachi, uh, the Lord's talking about um, that you robbed me in your tithes and your offerings. Mm -hmm. So the the church doesn't just operate on tithes; it operates on both. That's right. Both. Amen. Uh, and so, uh, a tithe is is ten percent of your income. An offering is whatever you choose to give extra. That's right. Uh, Amen. Uh, so, anyways, uh, let's read. Uh, let's read verse, verse eleven. Verse eleven says, "And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field," saith the Lord of hosts. I thought that was so interesting. Because that, that, that act of obedience, that act, right. of continual act of continual obedience, obedience to bring in your tithes and your mm -hmm. offerings to, to, to support the local church, which mm -hmm. is the, the, the temple now is uh, a type of the local church. It's where God's presence is known to be in the midst of the congregation. Uh, anyways, mm -hmm. uh, That's good. Uh, so bring in your tithes to, 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 to your local church. Mm -hmm. So that there'll be enough money in the bank accounts to pay all the bills, that's right. to meet all the needs and Absolutely. all the outreaches of the church. That's right. So that that's a gimme. But then that's he right. see, he, say, he makes this one statement. Not only does he say, "I'm going to open up the windows of heaven for you, and pour you out a blessing that you don't have enough room to contain it," mm -hmm. that's quite that's quite a picture. Because Absolutely. It, because it's using it's using these barns uh, and these. Uh, as a type mm -hmm. of, of, a, of a storehouse, so right. to speak. And right. what, what would happen is when they would gather all their grain for the harvest, they would run them through these chutes, and these chutes would just, uh, the, the grain would just come pouring out of them. Well, what God is saying here, that the grain's going to pour out of these chutes so much so that, it's, that, that there's not going to be enough room in these barns to contain mm -hmm. all the grain that's going to be given to you. That's right. That's powerful. Yeah, that is. But on top of that, mm -hmm. he says, I'm going to rebuke the devourer. That's right. This is how I'm going to make that happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to rebuke the devourer. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm going to rebuke him, the devourer. That's right. And I'm going to do it for your sake because you're in obedience. Amen. And, and he shall not, what? Destroy. So That's who right. is this, this, this devourer? Well, he's a destroyer. He's a destroyer. He, see, God, God didn't say, See, God can't curse you and then, and then tell you, I'm going to rebuke the devourer. Right. It doesn't work that way because yeah. he'd be rebuking himself if he, was, right. if, he was, if he was doing that to you. That's right. So he, that, that's, a, that's, that's a wash. Mm -hmm. He can't do that. Amen. So there's a devourer that we have to be concerned about, exactly. and his main purpose is to destroy. Right. And he's after our finances. Mm -hmm. But in, uh, in Exodus... He was after their lives. Right. Amen. Right. God, he's God after is, everything. He's after <laughs> everything. He is. I'm going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. Mm -hmm. And he, he's not going to what? Destroy the fruit of your ground. Mm -hmm. Again, it's talking about a farmer, agriculture type right. things. Uh, what you're able to produce. Yes. Uh, Neither shall your vines cast your fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. That's right. That is quite a promise. It is. He's going to rebuke the devourer. Mm -hmm. Now, obedience. the word rebuke mm -hmm. comes f uh, comes from an authoritative authoritative command, so that the one receiving the rebuke abandons his efforts for fear of retribution. Mm. That's good. The word is compatible to the same word for rebuke f used in the New Testament. Right. Interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. So let's read a couple of those verses where mm -hmm. we find that word rebuke. Because remember, it's compatible right. to what we've seen over here in Malachi. That's right. Which, which 
was uh, tied to the destroyer. Amen. Let's look at Mark chapter 1, verses 23 through 27. It says, And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And, the unclean, and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. So you can see how the rebuke is an authoritative command. Exactly right. Because of, because of that statement, right? That's right. Uh, so he rebukes this unclean spirit. Mm -hmm. And notice how the unclean spirit doesn't want to go. Right. He, he, he causes more problems for the individual, but has to go. It has to go. Because exactly. he's afraid of retribution. That's right. Have you come to punish us before our time? That's right. They knew it. They knew it. <laughs> they knew it. Amen. That's good. Uh, read read uh, Mark 4, 24 to 27, if you don't mind, please. Yes. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear, for with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given, and, to, and he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he has. And he, and, and he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep, and arise the next day, and the seed should spring up, spring and grow up, he knoweth not. I don't know how that got in there. It must have been a mistake. <laughs> but anyways, let's go past. It's yeah. Talking about planting seed. Right. There must have been a, I must have made a mistake in my notes. That's good. I'm thinking. Let's look at Luke uh, chapter 4, verses 38 and 39. Yeah. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left immediate. It left her, and immediately she arose and ministered unto them. He, she was had a, a bad fever. Yes. It had, it had, it had paralyzed her. Not in the sense that we would think paralyzed, but right. it it just it shut her down. She could not function right, she anymore. Right. Couldn't function. And uh, and so Jesus uh, stood over her. Mm -hmm. And then he rebuked the fever. Mm -hmm. So if you could just imagine Jesus standing over her with that authoritative voice right. and right. commanding that fever to leave her body, mm -hmm. and it left That's right. her immediately. Mm -hmm. And she arose, and then she began to minister mm -hmm. to them. In other words, she began to serve them. That's right. That, that is powerful. So when, so when God says, I'm going to rebuke the devourer, for your sake. Mm -hmm. That's a powerful phrase. Amen. That's a really powerful phrase. It is. That means you absolutely have to prosper mm -hmm. if you obey God's word. That's right. Going back to He has Malachi. done his part. He has the, done his and part the, and, and he will continue to right. do his part. That's right. Amen. Just because once once you do your part, mm -hmm. once you obey, in this case we're talking about bringing in our tithes and our offerings to the local church. But once you obey, once you obey, then he, may, he stands watch over you mm -hmm. and make sure that that devourer has no entrance to you. Right. As long as you're walking in obedience, That's right. your seed is protected in That's the right. ground. Amen. 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 It starts to spring up. That's right. He's not going to let the foxes get to it. That's right. He's not going to let the caterpillars get to it. Right. He's not going to let any kind of insects get to it. That's right. He stands guard over your money mm -hmm. and Amen. makes sure that your money multiplies right, right before your eyes. That's right. Glory be Amen. to God. Hallelujah. And that works for because us in, in, our, in the workplace. Yeah, because you can see how he says, he says, I'm going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. Mm -hmm. And he talks about that your vine's not going to be spoiled before it's time. That's right. Right? Mm-hmm. So he's he's watching over it, right? Exactly. Because there's a process there's of process time of there. Process of time there, exactly. And so and and so for a farmer, what's a farmer's greatest fear? Well, that someone would, that the fruit would die before its time, mm -hmm. or insects would come to it, right. and and start to destroy the crops. Destroy the crops. Right. 
So God's saying that, that's the devourer. The devil can use all kinds of things. Right, exactly. I think that portion of the scripture that we that was that we were supposed to use here mm -hmm. was talking about Jesus rebuking the wind mm -hmm. and storm stopping. You know when Jesus was in the ship, right? And he stood over the at, he stood at the end of the boat and he rebuked the wind. He said, "Oh, you little faith!" Right, right. right. So even so, even the element exactly he he he, he can rebuke. Right. Well, uh, when you're a farmer. Element, the elements of the weather is a big factor in Absolutely. whether your harvest is going to survive. That's right. So even whether it's the weather, whether it's the insects, whether right. it's animals, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He's going to rebuke the devourer. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. If it's sickness or disease, if it's a fever, he can rebuke that fever. Right. right. If it's a destroyer to come in to try to kill you, destroy you or kill you or hurt you in your own home, he can rebuke that. That's right. Amen. Amen. He can stand guard over that. That's right. God is so good. Amen. I, I guess we're out of time. We're, uh, and I apologize, Brad, because I didn't expect this to last that long. No, it's okay. Uh, okay. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> okay. Because the next thing we want to talk about is what is the concept of Passover? Amen. So anyways, God bless all of you. Thank you for for uh, uh, tuning in. And, uh, yes, amen. And uh, thank you for uh, going to the Word of God mm -hmm. with us. And be blessed. And prosper and we love you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen.